Hi guys, so this is going to be a really long review um, because I have so many different aspects of the latest episode of Breaking Bad that I want to talk about that it's it's going to take me a while. Um, and uh, this week's episode of Breaking Bad was episode 8 and um, probably for me uh, one of the best episodes of Breaking Bad ever. I mean, it had everything. It had references to the past. It had a really great flashback that explained uh, a character that we know uh, and either love or hate. Um, and it had some of the smartest dialogue that I've ever seen written for the show. And I believe the, sh uh, the show's episode was called Hermanos. I could have that wrong. It could be Dos Hermanos, but I believe it was Hermanos. And, um, it probably was the most informative episode I've seen of Breaking Bad so far. Um, now, for those of you who've seen the episode, forgive me for going through a brief recap. The episode opens with us talking to Gus and Walt, right after we realize that Hank has been shot by the brothers, and that one brother is cradling to life. Um... And uh, then, of course, we see that Mike goes in, syringes the other brother that's still alive, and he dies, and Gomez has a look on his face like, yeah, you go down, you piece of crap. You took away my friend kind of a deal. He has that look on his face. Um, and uh, that, that look uh, tells us so much in that scene. And this is from a season ago. Remember, this isn't current time. This is from a season ago. So Gomez gives uh, the dying brother a look, and of course Mike walks out all stealthy. Then we see where Gus goes. Where does Gus go? Gus goes to the bell guy. Don Salamanca, I think is what his name is. Um, I don't really know what his name is, but I, I'll call him the bell guy for now. Uh, so he goes to the bell guy, and slowly and carefully, explains how those two cousins got destroyed by Hank. And you see the Don just looking at him, just mean mugging Gus in the most awful way humanly possible. And after he finishes explaining how the brothers died, we move to a scene where there's water and blood in the water, and we don't know what in the world is going on. Then, um, after that, basically the next thing that happens is we enter into a conversation with Walt about how things are going with Jesse. Later on, we transition to the idea that, you know, Jesse is hiding things from Walt again, and um, Walt hates the idea of the secret keeping, also, we get um, this really superb scene from Hank where he's talking about how he believes that Gus is uh, a drug lord, um, which we all know that he is correct. Gus is a distributor for drugs. So later on in the episode, we get uh, Gus being called in by the DEA to be questioned about his fingerprints being in Gail Benneker's house. And I know uh, what I was thinking when this happened, like, oh crap, are they actually going to catch Gus and get him arrested? I know Gus is crafty, but I don't think he can really make a story out of this one that would get him out of this jam. That's what I was thinking. So, uh, Gus goes in there and he says, well, I gave Gail Benica a scholarship ages ago, and he came to me for money. And he says this all in a much craftier way than I'm uh, alluding to right now, but he tells the DEA agents that he gave uh, Benica a scholarship, and that Benica was after money, and after getting uh, money in a get-rich-quick kind of way that probably would have involved drugs, and the, all the DEA agents in the room that are in the interview completely and totally buy it. But 
Hank has one last little interview question up his sleeve. And he's like, Mr. Frank, I haven't heard of you before 1989. Is, is that your real name? Is Gus Frank your real name? And he, and he kind of sidesteps the question. Gus sidesteps the question and uh, says that, you know, something was up with his past. Or I don't think he answers it at all, actually. I'll have to rewatch that. But in any case, Gus dodges the question. Then the DEA agents are still sitting at the table, and they discuss whether they believe Gus, which all of them do except for Hank. And then we see Gus in the elevator. And his finger, one of his fingers, is trembling like he almost got caught. And we know that Hank doesn't believe a word of what Gus has said about his past or about Gail Bineker. So what does Gus decide to do? He decides to do the most unpredictable thing in the history of the show. He decides to enlist Walt to help him put a tracer on Gus's car at, uh, at the Poyos uh, Hermanos fast food chain while Gus is working. Gus um, uh, is kind of unaware of this until Walt puts the tracker on Gus's car then Walt goes in and there's Gus standing there and he's like would you like something to eat what would you like and he's like they're making me put a tracker on your car and Gus says do it and asks him what he wants to eat and then you know Walt buys a drink and walks out uh, and then puts the tracker on the car because he didn't originally. Um, after this, you know, they drive away successfully, and um, then we uh, later on see Jesse still, you know, working out dealings with Gus's crew, which still infuriates Walt. And then we get to pretty much the last scene. Because, of course, um, Gus finds the tracker, puts it on a dumpster, and rides away. To who? The Don again. Um, and he asks the Don, is today the day? And I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. But it leads us to an incredible flashback of what we assume is the late 70s, early 80s. And Gus has this meeting with the Dons of New Mexico, who are perfectly happy selling cocaine um, and Gus is trying to convince them all you must deal in crystal meth and he Gus and his partner are trying to convince the Dons to invest in crystal meth um, and the partner does a lot of talking up of Gus and the situation is very very tense because I'm thinking oh crap both of these guys are gonna get killed or at least one of them is going to get killed, or maybe they'll both get injured. And eventually the partner talks so much that he gets shot directly in the head, and Gus is forced to watch it happen. And and the Don guy, who we'll call the Bell guy again, basically forces his head down to look at his partner and says, the only reason why you're alive is because we know who you are. And uh, Gus says, in the present day, that today is not the day and walks out and I'm just sitting there stunned because now I know that the killing of the cousins was an act of revenge against uh, the killing of his original partner from the 70s and that he is trying to take that Don guy down despite knowing that that Don guy can't really do anything to hurt him now on to my overall review of this episode I absolutely loved this episode. I thought it was one of the finest Breaking Bad has ever done. I keep saying that, but it's true. Breaking Bad, even if it gets slow, always surprises me around the 8th or the ninth episode. And today, or yesterday rather, was no exception. They really took their time telling us the story of Gus Fring. And that is something that not only I value but it helped me understand why Gus is such a cold guy you know it's not 
him meaning to be cold or ruthless. It's just that that experience shaped who he is. And we get to see it. We got to see the whole thing play out. And that's the beauty of good writing. You don't just flesh out your main character or your supporting character. You flesh out everybody so that everybody in the show has a purpose. That way you can take the story six different ways at any point in the season that you wish to and have it make sense. Today they flushed out Gush Frame. And for that I'm very, very happy because I wanted to know what was up with this guy for a very long time. And because of this episode of Breaking Bad, I do now. And I am overjoyed. I cannot wait to see what happens next. And I want to make a brief prediction before I go. I think that this season will be the end of Gus and the rise of Walt. And that either Walt's adversary in the fifth season will be Jesse, Mike, the cleaner guy with the, with the silencer, or... There was one more. There was one. Oh, yes. It will either be Jesse, Mike, or Hank. Those will be the choices for his adversary in the fifth season. Now, I think that theoretically, the best adversary to go with would be um, Hank, but the more dangerous adversary to go against would probably be, be Jesse. I think um, that this was a brilliant episode and that people who like Breaking Bad were probably thrilled last night. But enough about what I thought about the show. What did you guys think? Did you guys like the episode? Did you hate the episode? What do you think of Gus? What do you think of Walter at this point? Let me know. I'll see you guys next time.